I'm going to give you the order of events that I think happened and then go back and kind of review each of them just a little bit to try to put it into perspective of what happened to cause the flood. Noah and the animals went safely onto the ark. God shut the door, sealed them in. I think a 300 below zero Fahrenheit ice meteor came flying through the solar system and began to break apart. Fragments of this meteor hit the planets and caused the craters on the moon and other planets. And a bunch of it came and made the rings around the other planets. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune all have ice rings around them. And some of the fragments of this meteor hit the Earth, landing on mostly the North and South Pole, freezing the mammoths standing up. As this meteor came flying in and breaking apart in space, the fragments would tend to be dumped largely around the poles because of the Earth's magnetic field. So the Earth had these massive cold spots. Massive cold spots, eh? Well, in order to understand why this is bullshit, it's necessary to understand the general orders of magnitude of the solar system. The Earth is a gravitational well. In order to escape from that well, it's necessary to have a certain amount of energy. This is usually expressed as an escape velocity, the speed at which you need to throw an unpowered object for it to escape from the gravitational well of the Earth. For the Earth, this is about 10 kilometers per second. This is also the velocity that an object falling from infinity to the Earth's surface will gain. So if an object falls from infinity to the Earth's surface, it'll hit it at about 10 kilometers per second. However, the Earth is only a bit player in the gravitational profile of the solar system. Shown in black is the potential felt by unit mass in the solar system, while in red is shown how much of this potential is due to the Sun. If we zoom out, we find that it takes much more energy to escape from the Sun than from the Earth. Similarly, an object falling into the solar system, such as the comet the creationist mentions, will gain a lot of energy. As it turns out, an object falling into the Sun's gravitational well will be travelling at about 30 kilometers per second by the time it reaches the Earth, which is also about the orbital velocity of the Earth. So let's take a unit mass and collide it with the Earth at cometary speed. It turns out that enough energy is released to raise the heat of that unit mass by 10,000 degrees Celsius. Now when you're talking about raising the temperature of an object by 10,000 degrees Celsius, it really doesn't matter if you start from absolute zero, that's about 300 degrees below freezing, or if you're working in Celsius or Fahrenheit. The one thing that's absolutely certain is such an impact wouldn't freeze the mammoths where they stood, it would vaporize them. Now let's assess the amount of energy that would be released by such an impact. This girl sits in a cubic meter. A cubic meter of water weighs about a ton. Recently, the deep impact probe dropped an impactor weighing about a third of a ton into the comet. The impactor struck the comet at about 10 kilometers per second and released the equivalent energy of about 4.5 tons of TNT. Now, if a cubic meter of water hits the Earth at cometary speed, 30 kilometers per second, that will release enough energy to raise the temperature of that water to 10,000 degrees Celsius. That's an equivalent release of energy to 100 tons of TNT to be dumped largely around the poles because of the Earth's magnetic field. So the Earth had these massive cold spots. We've already shown that the massive cold spots would be about 10,000 degrees Celsius. But let's now say the comet size here was a mere 200 by 200 by 200 kilometers, much smaller than that shown in our creationist animation. How much energy would such an impact release? Well, it's difficult to convey such numbers in a meaningful fashion. This is about a 4 megaton thermonuclear device. A 200 by 200 by 200 kilometer ice ball colliding with the Earth at cometary speed would release the equivalent energy of 30 such nuclear devices for each of the 6 billion people who currently live on this planet. It doesn't make any difference if the comet arrives in one piece or as fragments. It will still deliver exactly the same amount of energy. That's 30 4 megaton devices for each of the 6 billion people who currently live on the planet.
If Noah really was on that ark, water would have been the least of his problems. Fragments of this meteor hit the planets, landing on mostly the North and South Pole, freezing the mammoths standing up. 